Okay, I have a review for Snap Hill CK 2016. It's available on its own as Snap Hill Pro or Snap Hill CK 2016, or you can get it in a pack called the Creative Kit along with some other photography programs by Mac Fun. But I've uh, this is just I'm just going to review this program this time because I've reviewed Creative Kit separately and I'll put a link in the description and I've reviewed Noiseless CK or Noiseless Pro as its own video as well and I'll put a link to, in the description to that. This is Snap Hill which is their program for removing objects from your photos while uh, kind of replacing what you've removed with a background that matches the rest of the image and you'll see that in a minute. Uh, there is a cheaper version of Snap Hill that isn't called CK or Pro, it's just Snap Hill but it doesn't support the raw file format such as .raws etc and there's a few other differences so I would recommend personally that if you get Snap Hill or one of their any of their programs you go for the Pro or CK version or even get the CK pack so anyway let's begin if you're familiar with any of their other programs such as Noiseless CK or Aurora HDR Pro which I've also reviewed and I'll try to remember to put a link in the description to that as well then you'll be quite uh, comfortable with this interface. We have options to load an image from here, save and share our final image to either open it in another program. So if you have, for instance, the Creative Kit on here, you can send this program then to something like Tonality or Intensify and do some more changes. Or what I would recommend is you start in one of these other programs, you start in Intensify or Tonality, then you send it to this to remove any objects you need to remove, then remove it if you have the program, Noiseless, as a final step to remove any noise in the image. I tend to do Noiseless as a final step. Or you can just save it directly out as an image from this program, so save it as a JPEG or whatever. Then we have next the crop ability. Let's just click that to show you. We have a rule of thirds grid here up and we can crop the image however we'd like. We then have very standard options for zooming in on the image, zooming out or zooming in at 100%. Then we have fit to screen which is what I normally work in. Then we have our hand tool which is what is selected at the moment. Then we have quick preview. You have to hold this down and that will show any changes uh, before and after. There isn't any changes yet, so I'll show it again to you later. Then we have side by side. If we click that, we'd have a side by side before and after. Again, you won't see any difference because we haven't made any changes to the image. So I'll probably go back over that later. So this is the latest version at the time I'm making this video, which is 1.5. It's a 2016 version of snap heel ck in this case it came in the pack of creative kit because i reviewed that recently but you can buy it independently of the pack you can install it as a plugin for photoshop lightroom aperture or photoshop elements if you have the programs installed if you say you have adobe photoshop installed it will have the install button lit up here and you can click it to install from the file menu, pretty standard, export image, open in one of the other programs, including opening in Apple Photos, share to mail or email, basic edit menu, although you can get to your crop and your retouch for your mask there, views pretty standard, minimize zoom, then help here, including watching video tutorials. Let's full screen a minute. Okay, under erase, this is what you'd want to do first. You have erase, then you can select your brush, then your brush size. You can either select from a preset size here, which is very small, next size up, next size up again, or absolutely huge. I would go to this one, then probably make it a little bit smaller, maybe even a bit smaller again, like that. Then what we want to do is find something we want to remove from the image. Now in this case, I think what we want to do is simply remove the man and his dog, or uh, the man, the dog, and the bin here. So let's zoom in. I'm going to go to my hand tool so I don't actually start erasing before I'm ready. Now I'm zoomed in. That's even going a bit further. I can then select my brush again. Then I paint over the object I want to remove, including a bit of a extra, a little bit extra around the edges just to help it. 
Now this may not work perfectly because I'm selecting a large area so you might want to do a little bit at a time. Now if we have selected too much, like if we say select this and we don't want that, we can select the eraser and remove that mask from the area where we don't want it. Then we can go back to the brush and mask in more of an area if we needed it. We can then hit erase, but before we hit erase there are a few more options. We have global, which says works best when you want to erase big objects. Then we have local, use it for images depicting sky, clouds, multiple small objects, which would probably be good for this one. Or dynamic, this mode works best to delete imperfections on skin or with very small objects. So from those descriptions, I would say local is probably best. Then we have precision, which is how much effort you want it to put in. Do you want normal mode, high or highest? The higher the setting, the longer it will take to render. So normal would be a lot quicker than highest but you'll get better results on highest than you would on normal and you get better results on high than you would on normal or highest better better than normal etc so let's have it on highest and just let it take a minute to do this you'll then get a few little trivia things here like nintendo was established in 1889 and they started out making uh, playing cards then we get a percentage bar and we just have to wait a second for it to finish Okay, there you go. That was not in real time because I want to speed up for the sake of this video, but it didn't take too long. It wasn't very long, especially considering I'm not on an iMac and I'm not on a Mac Pro. I'm on a MacBook Pro, so I'm on a 13-inch Mac laptop, and it did you know did it reasonably quick considering I'm on the highest setting here. Now, if we zoom out, look at that. It it's completely gone, and that was by doing the man the dog and the bin at the same time as you can see maybe it could you could tidy up a little bit but one way to do that quickly and easily would perhaps be to do each object individually so you, you might get better results if you want by selecting bin on its own delete that then select the dog and the man then delete that instead of doing man dog and bin i think uh, you'd get better results but still it's turned out pretty well considering it as a quick job we just did there now there is a clone tool here with settings for diameter, softness, opacity, and that basically works like the clone tool in programs such as Lightroom or Photoshop. So if you're familiar with clone tools and other photo editing programs, then you know how that works. We then have a lasso tool, so we can use a free or a polygonal. So we can, let me show you how it works. I'm not actually good at delete anything but say we wanted to select around this area here to delete it there you go that's a way of masking freehand without using a brush so you might be able to get get around edges a little bit better there and be a little bit more precise by using the lasso which is a nice handy extra feature let's undo that now let's go back and look at the next mode which is retouch now we have Retouch. So retouch allows us to make some edits, which uh, to the actual image the look, overall look, which is quite good considering this is not a full image editor. It is purely to really delete objects. But if you do, if all you want to do is remove some objects and then make a few little tweaks, and you don't necessarily want to then send it over to Intensify or another program, you can make a few edits from the retouch menu. So we can apply the diameter, etc of our brush like we could before then we can select things like the blur the colors the sharpness the clarity the sh uh, shadows the highlights the contrast exposure hue saturation tint temperature so we could say for a start put blue all the way up and maybe adjust it here on the temperature then watch what happens when we paint over an area we basically recolored it uh, and one use for that may be, let's just double click the names of those to reset it. What if we just, all we need to do to an image in Snap Hill was remove that man and the dog and the bin and then maybe add a little bit of sharpness or clarity to one object like a stone or the tree trunk or something like that. And we didn't want to move it to another program just to do that. We could maybe put up some sharpening here I'm just using random settings it may not be enough maybe too much then we can paint over the object now that tree has a little bit of extra clarity and sharpness to it 
and we didn't have to open it in another program, which is quite handy. We can then hit apply. There we go. So we're opening another program. We've added some clarity and sharpness to the trunk as well as removing those unnecessary objects. We also have some options here for the showing and hiding of the mask. So for example, when I did that sharpness, I couldn't see what I was doing. Well, let's put a sharpness here again. I'm going overboard with it, but now watch when I paint on. Now I'm adding that sharpness and clarity to the tree trunk, but I actually see where it's going to be applied, which is handy. I tend to prefer to use a mask to do things like that, so I know what I'm doing. I'm not going to apply that. That was overboard. I'm just going to hit reset. And I'm going to hide the mask. Now I'm going to go to adjustment. Now adjustment allows us to apply a few of those similar settings as we did in retouch, but to the entire image. With retouch, you mask out an area like the tree trunk and change its color or apply some clarity and sharpness. Well, with uh, adjust, we can change the overall temperature, make it a little warmer because it was a, so a hot sunny summer's day, or we can change the tint Apply some saturation really boosts the colors, which actually looks quite nice, a bit overboard, but there you go, a bit of sharpness there to the colors, a bit of a boost. We can then do a uh, exposure, brightness, contrast. We're gonna touch up the shadows, the highlights, the clarity, and that clarity will apply to the whole entire image, not just that tree trunk. So maybe not go quite so overboard. A bit of sharpness, and then denoise. Now, with denoise, you can do a bit of denoising in this. So if you've got a bit of grain, a bit of noise in the image, you can apply some denoise from this program. But if you own Noiseless, either separately or in the pack of Creative Kit, I would recommend, I personally, myself, would never use the denoise in Snap Hill or in Aurora HDR Pro or anything. I would make all my changes in whatever program it is, such as Snap Hill or Aurora then I would tell it to send the image to Noiseless CK. Then from Noiseless, I do the noise reduction because it's a dedicated program for noise reduction. And also it has an automatic mode where when you first pull in an image into Noiseless, it will automatically look at the image and decide upon the best settings. So that's what I like to do. I normally like to open my image noiseless and let it use the default settings because I never really trust myself to get the settings right. I'm always afraid I'm going to put too much, boost the settings too much and ruin the image, uh, at least when a professional looks at it or whatever. So I like to just open it and let it use the default settings and go from there. Uh, but of course, noiseless does have manual settings as well. But I just tend to use the default, let it let it examine the image and apply its own settings. Then if it's obvious, not, obviously not enough, I will then boost the sliders just a teeny bit. So that is what I'd recommend you do if you have noiseless is you don't touch denoise in Snap Hill, don't touch the denoise in Aurora. Just edit your image in these programs, then send it to noiseless and go from there and save your final image out from noiseless. Now, now we've done that, Let's have a look at our compare options. If we hold down on the eye icon, which is a quick preview or press backslash on the keyboard, holding it down shows the very original image before any changes were made. Then if we release the button, we can see the changes we've made. Hold down, let go, hold down, let go. Or then we can press this one here and compare them side by side. That is very handy, especially the little eye icon to have a quick look. There is a trial available of the Creative Kit and I always recommend that you go and download the trial first and try it out for yourself. So a free trial is available and I'll put a link in the description to their website so you can find it easily. It claims to be the world's most advanced image healing software. Its key features are proprietary object removal technologies, three erasing modes for best results, custom erasing precision, powerful clone and stamp heel tool, handy image editing tool set, selective enhancement with a smart brush, a standalone software and plugin. So you can either use it, as I mentioned earlier, as its own program like I was showing you, or it can be used as a plugin for things like Photoshop and Lightroom. And it has built-in social sharing. 
Snap Hill CK or Snap Hill Pro. Snap Hill CK costs £17.50 in the UK or about $25 US. Or you can buy it in the pack of Creative Kit, which also comes with Intensify, Noiseless CK, Tonality, FX Photo Studio, and Focus. It requires Mac OS 10, 10.9 or above, and 4 gigs of RAM. It supports raw file formats such as NEF, DNGs, etc. Except the regular cheaper one doesn't. The regular Snap Hill is available in the Mac App Store doesn't support raw. Only Snap Hill CK does. It also supports TIFF files 8 or 16 bit, PNGs and JPEGs. And it's available in English, French, German, Dutch, Italian, Portuguese, Spanish and more coming soon. I do really, 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 really recommend it. It is so easy and quick to use. Yeah, maybe the snap healing type of tools in Photoshop or some other expensive full image editor that costs hundreds of pounds or whatever might be better. Maybe it will detect the backgrounds better. I don't know. But certainly unless you want to pay for one of those big professional programs this is so good it works very well look how well we removed a man a dog and a ben in just a couple clicks it took just two seconds i wasn't being precise i wasn't making sure the settings were right i just quickly rubbed around the area where they were at and hit a race and it got rid of them pretty well without me being precise and just doing a quick job it worked really well so i really recommend it if you uh, need to, to occasionally remove objects and things from photos or even do some basic repair on skin etc this is really the program to look at so i do recommend that you download the trial and give it a shot for yourself that will also allow you to see if it works fine on your system and is quick enough to depend upon your specs a link will be in the description to the website so you can download the trial or buy it thanks for watching please like and comment on this video and if you could do me a huge favor and subscribe as it only takes a few seconds and will help me out a lot. Thanks.